Shalom, my friends, from here in Israel. Um, holiday of Purim just ended, which means we are in the Passover season. And the Passover season here in Israel is um, a time where we are remembering that biblical story from Exodus that once we were slaves and God uh, miraculously freed us. We remember that um, uh, there was a wicked Pharaoh who enslaved the Jewish people for generations. And it looked like the Jewish people would never be free. Uh, but God both hardened Pharaoh's heart and he also redeemed us. That after we had the 10 plagues, those who trusted in God put the uh, blood on the doorpost and God passed over their homes when there was the final plague of the killing of the firstborn. And then we know that God in an instant, Bechilazon, it says that the Israelites had to leave Egypt. In an instant, they were freed. God brought us out of Egypt and we started our path towards receiving the Torah and going into Israel, the Holy Land. And there are so many lessons here that we'll be talking about as we approach Purim, as we approach Passover. Um, but one of the main lessons is for me, this idea of faith. Yeshua Tashem Keheref Ein, redemption from the Lord comes in the blink of an eye that sometimes things look really bad. Think about it. For generations, the Israelites were enslaved. They must have thought that they would never be freed, that they'll never be good times for them. They'll never uh, be appreciated as a people, but rather they are uh, put down and enslaved. And in a second, God changed that. In a second, God gave them the Torah and made them what is called in the Bible, Am uh, the chosen people. Now, what does it mean to be the chosen people? Um, Rabbi Shlomo Kralbach gave a beautiful uh, explanation that, that I hold on to, dear, which it means uh, God chose the Jewish people to tell the world that they're chosen, that this message of the Old Testament, of the Ten Commandments, was given to the Jewish people to give to the world. And we have to remember before that, before they were given the Torah, before they were taken out of Egypt, um, the world were idol worshipers. They were sacrificing their children. There were human sacrifices. There was no morality. There was no concept not to steal or not to kill. It was the stronger one who is able to take advantage of the weaker one. And the kind of beautiful values that God gave to the world that made us into the world we are now are based on these values of when uh, the Israelites were freed from slavery in Egypt, given the Torah on Mount Sinai and brought into Israel. And so Passover is a very important holiday, both as far as the messages to remember and also um, as far as the biblical commandment to remember that you were once slaves in Egypt. When you read the scriptures, it says over and over and over, remember that you were once slaves in Egypt. And now, as the Jewish people are in a war, what I say a war on two fronts, first of all, the war against our homeland, the one homeland we have, a war against Israel, where we are literally fighting for our survival. Um, that's one war. And the second war is the war of anti-Semitism that looks so much like the 1930s before the Holocaust, that for the past 70 years, people were saying never again, the world pledged never again. And in this modern progressive world. You could be anything. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of who you are. You could be vegetarian. You could be a meat eater, whatever your orientation is. Don't be ashamed of it. Whatever you believe, you know, you should be celebrated. You should have a safe space unless you're a Jew. If you're a Jew, you shouldn't be proud of that. You shouldn't celebrate that. And somehow the world has a right to hate Jews. It's the same anti-Semitism that we've seen throughout history. And so we're fighting a war now on two fronts, the anti-Semitism and the war for our very survival in Israel. And so this Passover is different than any other Passover, both as far as the messages that we need to internalize, that God can redeem us in a second, that things look dark, but they can turn around in an instant. The message that we have to have faith, just like the Israelites in Egypt had faith when they put the blood on their doorpost, just like they had faith when they tied the, the land outside of their house to represent their faith in God, that they had faith in God when they left Egypt quickly and they didn't even wait for their bread to rise. That's why we eat special matzah, the Passover food. And so both we have to have faith, the faith of the Israelites that they had then in Egypt when they were redeemed. And we also, also, also have to remember what we're fighting for. We're fighting for these values of freedom, of faith, of, of one God, of 
all these things that we learn in the scriptures and the Ten Commandments, all the lessons that God gave us after he took us out of Egypt, this is what we live for. And this is unfortunately what so many people are dying for. And so the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews is having a very, very special Passover food campaign. And I need your help. Because Passover is all based around the food. We're commanded in the Torah, in the, in the Bible, in the Hebrew Bible, in the scriptures, it specifically says to eat unleavened bread. And that's called matzah in modern Hebrew. And how can you celebrate Passover without matzah? And there are so many families here in Israel right now who are hurting. We have over 80,000 internally displaced people. We have elderly and children and families who have been evacuated from their homes on the northern border and are now living, I just yesterday met with a family, six people living in a one-room apartment because they're evacuees. They haven't worked in six months. They were evacuated on October 7th, and they don't know when they're going to be able to go home. We have so many people in southern Israel whose homes were burned, whose homes were hit by rockets, whose homes were attacked by Hamas terrorists. They also don't know when they're going to be able to go home. And they need our help to have a happy Passover. How can we do this? How can we have a happy Passover? Are you with me? Are you going to help it? Are you going to help me bring them a happy Passover? The truth is we are so blessed. We are so privileged. And all it takes to help them have a happy Passover during this war for Israel's survival is the whole world seems to be against Israel and the Jewish people. All we have to do is donate a food box. $25, $25 and a family, an elderly, an evacuee, someone who was affected by terror, a family member who was killed by Hamas terrorists. The fellowship will bring them a food box on your behalf, on your behalf, $25, and you are telling the elderly who are affected by this war, the families who are affected by this war, the children whose fathers have been killed during this war in Israel, simply for being Jewish, you're coming and you're saying, I'm a Christian, I'm a Jew, and I stand with you. You are not alone. And so by giving $25 um, to Passover food aid, I believe, first of all, you are doing the greatest um, justice in God's eyes. God talks over and over again. Um, let all who are hungry come and eat. Feed those who are hungry. It's the most basic, basic, basic. If you are blessed that you have food, share it with others. God tells us that over and over again. And especially now during this season in Israel, where Israel's fighting for its survival, where so many people are hurting, where so many people are morning, where it feels like the whole world is against Israel, where it feels like anti-Semitism is just on the rise and everyone hates the Jewish people. You can come as a Christian, as a Jew and say, I don't hate the Jewish people. I don't hate Israel. I am praying for the peace of Jerusalem. I see the injustice that's happening. I stand with the people of Israel who are affected by this. And so I believe Passover is the best time to do this. And our Passover campaign is now. We could only distribute as many food boxes as we're able to raise the money for. So if you could give one food box, $25. If you could give two food boxes, $50. Wow, I can't even imagine what we can do together. And, and remember, there are tens of thousands of people who need this food for Passover, from the elderly Holocaust survivors who are now living as evacuees to all of the people who's in Israel whose homes were burned and hit by ro terrorist rockets to uh, survivors of um, Hamas terror attacks. We are going to, with your help, help all of them with food aid for Passover and bring them hope. So join me in the link. Uh, you'll see the link here. I put it in the uh, notes and, and in the uh, description of this video. Just one food box. If you could do two food boxes, pray about it. Ask God what he would have you do. But together, let's bring food and hope to the people of Israel this Passover season. And I believe bring great joy to God as well. Behold, Yeshua Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Worthy is the Lamb.